Today, Alberta's forests and prairie ecosystems support many wildlife species, provide life-supporting services like fresh water, and produce valuable food, oil, gas, and timber. How have Alberta's ecosystems changed in the past 30 years? What will Alberta be like in another 30 years? Will Alberta's ecosystems support the same wildlife, provide the same services, and produce the same amount of natural resources? In 1901, there were 73,000 people living in Alberta. Today, 3.7 million people live in the province. As Alberta's population has increased, the amount of natural resources that we consume and export has risen. This has led to increased disturbance of Alberta's ecosystems. People affect the environment through activities such as agriculture, urban development, oil and gas exploration, and forestry. These activities are called land use. Albertans are committed to sustainable development. This means that our actions today should not harm the health of ecosystems for future generations. Land use has positive effects, like natural resource production. Land use also has negative effects, like disturbing wildlife habitat. To achieve sustainable development in Alberta, we must wisely plan land use to balance the positive and negative effects. We can no longer look at one individual land use in isolation, but rather we need to look at the cumulative effects of all the different land uses together. The next step is to design a land use strategy to achieve society's goals. To select a suitable land use strategy, we need to try to understand how land use will change ecosystems in the future. To understand how ecosystems may change, we need to understand the living and non-living parts of ecosystems, how these parts are connected, and how the parts may be impacted by land use and natural events. Because ecosystems involve so many parts and connections, scientists often use computers to build models of ecosystems. If scientists can tell a computer how ecosystem parts are related, the computer can perform the tedious calculations to estimate how ecosystems can change. Ecosystem models are an example of how science can be used to help make good decisions. Some biologists study how people impact ecosystems. The results of this research are used to build an ecosystem model. The ecosystem model is then used to help people decide what land use strategy should be used. Models aren't perfect. Just like weather forecasts, ecosystem models can be wrong because our understanding isn't complete. As scientists learn more about ecosystems, the models improve. And models aren't crystal balls. Models can't predict the future because the future depends on the choices we make. Models can, however, be used to compare how a range of land use choices may change ecosystems. Alberta Tomorrow is an ecosystem model that can help you compare how a range of land use choices can change natural resource production, wildlife habitat, and ecosystem services in Alberta. By learning about changes that have taken place from different land uses in the past, you will be able to model the future and see the effects on economic and environmental indicators. With Alberta Tomorrow, you will first need to find your location on the map. Once you have done that, you will be able to examine land use changes that have occurred over the past 30 years. You will also have the opportunity to go out into the field and collect information about the current status of your ecosystem. Once you have learned about the different land uses that occur in your local area and have seen the effects over the past few decades, you will have the opportunity to design the future. Your first step will be to set goals for the future. Where do you want each of the indicators to be in 30 years? You will be able to see whether continuing with historical land use practices will meet your goals 30 years into the future. More than likely, some of your goals will not be achieved. It will then be your job to develop a new land use plan by drawing a map 
to divide your region between urban development and natural areas. You will also specify how much of the region should be available for industrial development, oil and gas and forestry, by setting the human activity lever. You can choose between linear and exponential growth and click the best practices on or off. You will then simulate your land use plan 30 years into the future. If after pressing play, the outcome still don't meet your goals, you will have to either change your goals or change your land use plan and run the simulation again. Here in Alberta, we've enjoyed the benefits of living in a prosperous province. This growth and prosperity has its effects on both the environment and the economy. Can we continue to grow as we have in the past? Or is something going to give? You'll have to come up with a balanced plan that takes into consideration trade-offs we may have to accept. Alberta's future is in your hands. See what you can do.